This episode of Live WP TV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. Okay, can I just get a lay of the land? Developers, designers, raise your hands. People who are aspiring to run an agency and sort of people who are in the process of building, you're not aspiring to build an agency. <laughs> and, <laughs> Um, anybody who actually already has a uh, WordPress product under development, looking to increase that awesome stuff. Okay, this is uh, Lessons Learned from WordPress Entrepreneurs. For those folks who don't know me, which is probably everybody in the room, I run a, a podcast called The Matt Report. Uh, does anybody listen to it? Awesome. Let's, hopefully I can get more of you to listen to it by the end of this. Uh, so I've done over about 80 plus interviews. Uh, you can find me on iTunes, Stitcher, and SoundCloud. I've been doing this for probably about almost two years. Uh, over 5,000 hours of YouTube viewership uh, on my YouTube channel. And I also run a digital agency closer to the Cape down in Dartmouth, Mass, if anybody's familiar with that neck of the woods. Uh, we build some client, we do some client services stuff, themes, uh, plugins, and other WordPress media. I take all of the stories and, and lessons I learned from these folks who we're going to be talking about tonight, and I apply it to my own practice, right? And I also help uh, other folks who are doing this stuff uh, through, this, through the uh, media of my podcast. So hopefully they can learn some more. So we're going to talk about a few of these folks tonight that, we've, that I've interviewed, and uh, some of them might be familiar to you. Some of them might be brand new. Uh, and I've narrowed it down to 12 lessons that I hope that uh, you all can take away from this. What I like, uh, for those of you who are on Twitter, when, you get, when I get to a profile page of a uh, person that I've interviewed, if you could just say thanks to them uh, on Twitter, that would be great. Their Twitter handle will be on the slide, uh, and you can just reference uh, our Boston WordPress meetup if you wish. So lesson number 12 uh, is from a gentleman named Frankie Jarrett, uh, who just recently launched the WP Stream plugin. Anybody familiar with the WP Stream plugin? Two. It's an awesome plugin for tracking all these things that go on in your WordPress site. Uh, he's the lead developer at, w at X Team, uh, which produced WP Stream. He's a great person to tune into if you are into plugin development uh, and product creation. Um, so if that is you, uh, Frankie Jarrett's definitely one uh, to follow online. Uh, he really emphasizes the fact that we have to understand uh, that our digital work is never finished, right? Anybody who knows this, right? Especially if those of us who are selling websites or client services to, to small businesses know that it's never really done. Sure, we launch it, we get it out there, but there's always something that's going to come into play, especially uh, a larger product. Uh, so plan to iterate and ship off, right? Do this as, you know, you can do this in any means you want. There are platforms that will help you do this. Things like Trello, Basecamp are great. Uh, for setting milestones and understanding what the next level will be. Um, and being, build great teams uh, and lines of communication. Uh, Frankie really emphasizes the fact that finding great developers, uh, so if you're a designer uh, and you are not good at development, find a developer, maybe somebody in this room, uh, that can help you develop the, the, uh, the WordPress side of it. Uh, but it is very important to build those teams uh, and have great open lines of communication. So just as an example, if you'd like to thank uh, Frankie for that uh, amazing story, you can do something like that on Twitter to say thanks. They all kind of expect this. This is something that I really emphasize in the podcast, to say thanks for the time that they spent with us. Bob Dunn. Uh, he's a gentleman who isn't afraid to sort of niche down and train WordPress users, right? He has uh, BobWP.com, where he trains folks how to use your work, their WordPress website. So if you are, again, somebody who's launching these sites out for clients, this might be something you already do uh, in your client services, and if you're just so aggravated with it that it's just, man, they, they just don't get this side of WordPress, uh, Bob Dunn has some, uh, some great tolerance uh, for those types uh, of situations. And he definitely has uh, referral programs and things like that, and all he does all day long is train people how to use WordPress. Um, so find your fit and focus on that. That's exactly what Bob does, right? Bob isn't a developer or a designer. Uh, he doesn't really you know, follow the tech side of WordPress as intensely as maybe some of us do, uh, but that doesn't stop him from doing what he loves and, find, and having a business uh, that surrounds that. So don't be afraid to, uh, of what others are doing. 
he has some serious competition from places like lynda.com, Treehouse. Uh, but that doesn't stop him um, from going out and, and training other people and finding those types of clients. Be flexible and understanding with customers, as we all know in the training process, especially when they don't get WordPress or they don't understand what maybe Facebook or Twitter is. Um, he has uh, a very good understanding with them and he'll spend the time. Um, and he certainly doesn't give away his time for free. Um, and he really preaches that uh, on his site. Carrie Dills of CarrieDills.com, a uh, very well-known Genesis developer. Anybody using Genesis Studio Press for their projects? Okay. So uh, Carrie's found tremendous growth in this vertical, right? When she started out with WordPress, she was looking at many different platforms to use or plugins and themes to use. Once she found Studio Press and Genesis um, and the community behind that, she focused down and niched down on that, and that's how she has found tremendous growth. Uh, you can find her at CDills. And she also has uh, a podcast that she does every week about uh, Genesis. Um, so latch on to other verticals and communities in WordPress. There are other communities within WordPress. There's the WordPress community, and then there's larger theme shops like a Studio Press, a platform like Genesis, and other plugins that, that people uh, will come around. Uh, find a balance between services and products. So she also, as she has built her uh, sort of client services portfolio, Year after year, she has raised her prices uh, and the level of client that she takes on. Um, and then coming up from the back end, she's now launching themes uh, and selling digital products to sort of give herself a couple cha uh, channels of revenue so she's not just focused on client work. And then she can find a healthy balance. I mean, the, probably the most well-known of doing that is 37 Signals, Basecamp, selling client services to building a digital product. Uh, and be, be friendly and helpful within the community. Right? This is how she has always done it. This is something that you could mirror and replicate uh, with other folks in the WordPress space. Garrett Moon recently launched uh, a plugin called CoSchedule. Does anybody use CoSchedule? Have heard of CoSchedule? A couple of you? Awesome, awesome. Uh, they just recently raised $500,000 of funding uh, for their plugin. Uh, they're out in Dakota, uh, North Dakota. Um, so he has a very interesting story to tell. If you're an entrepreneur uh, and you're very focused on design, maybe software as a service, uh, Garrett's definitely someone to follow. So they recently raised 500000 for their plugin. All it does is schedule your posts. That's the essence of it. it schedules your posts. It's got a nice calendar. It's great for teams. And they can do some social media stuff. Uh, but he really emphasizes uh, putting your product first, uh, especially if you're bootstrapping. So one of the best stories that he told me, they have a services company called Today Made. So they get caught up in building websites for clients. And you, never, you know it never goes according to plan. Uh, and for the longest time, every Monday, it was coming in and talking about all the problem projects. You know, we're still waiting for content from this person. We're still having trouble with this project. All the while, they're trying to launch their plugin, uh, co-schedule. So he just got into the mindset of saying, every Monday, we're just going to start with the positive meeting and talk about the plugin itself. This is what we're really focused on, right? So he, he just shifted the whole sort of, uh, I don't want to say culture, but the whole at least Monday morning meeting kickoff uh, with focusing on what they want to do with the product. Let's get that positive energy going early on in the week uh, and know that we're still going to service our clients, but our team's goals are going to be on launching this plugin, and it's brought in success so far. Focus on big problems uh, and solving uh, that as easy as possible, right? So scheduling your posts, right? Sure, you can do that in WordPress, but what happens when you want to do that with a team? Then you got to introduce a calendar, and oh, by the way, when we're scheduling our posts, we're putting it out on Twitter and Facebook and all that kind of fun stuff. So how can we do that and integrate social very easily? And that's hopefully what he's, he's doing with CoSchedule. Brian Clark, copy blogger, probably familiar to some folks in here. Um, started copy blogger as just a blog, um, and a few years back had partnered up with Brian Gardner of Studio Press, and now have formed uh, probably one of the largest uh, WordPress content marketing sites, focused on WordPress focused content marketing sites, um, and along with Studio Press and Genesis, probably one of the most popular uh, theme frameworks on the web. Places a heavy focus on building an audience to talk about products. Is anybody in here doing blogging and content marketing for themselves or for their clients? 
nobody. You're shaking your head like you want to do it, but you're afraid to do it. Don't want to do it. Don't want to do it because you don't think it's going to work. Not interesting. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so he puts a heavy focus on if we're going to launch products, if we're going to find clients, we have to build the content and build the audience first. This is one of the things that they've recently done uh, with their Rainmaker platform, uh, finding a solution to the audience that you have. Right. So over the course of X amount of years, however long they've been building Coffee Blogger, they would attract other consultants, other WordPress design shops, other marketers, and they would just listen to that audience and say, what is it that you really want? Well, we know you want WordPress themes because you're buying WordPress themes from us in a studio press, and that's great. Um, then they would sell educational products and things around content marketing. But recently launching Rainmaker, um, that's a culmination of sort of like a HubSpot, right? <laughs> uh, where it's a $100 a month almost alternative to, blogs, uh, to HubSpot. Um, obviously, some very big differences, but they've taken all of the residual of what they've built over the years with themes, membership plugins, and just listening to their audience, packaging that all in uh, to a service like that. Anybody launching a software as a service or hoping to launch a software as a service with WordPress? Awesome. Awesome. Very good. Number seven, Tom McFarland. Uh, TomMcFarland.com and Pressware. Uh, he's a great influential WordPress blogger, great uh, individual to follow for somebody who's focused on product, uh, especially somebody who's focused on development. Uh, so certainly follow Tom for that stuff. Uh, so focus on the finer points, right? Focus on the finer points of your product, of your offering, uh, whatever it is, a plugin or a theme or a service, uh, and create a culture or belief of high quality product. He doesn't really ever stray from the fact of saying, well, my product is okay. It sort of does this. Like He has a theme called Mayor, which is uh, available on WordPress.com and now.org. He sells this theme for 100 bucks, 99 bucks. Um, he's one person developing this, this theme and putting a lot of work into it. And he's very proud of it, and he supports it really well, and he puts a lot of time and energy into it. And he's not afraid to say, this is worth 100 bucks. This is worth 100 bucks because you're going to build a great blog with this, and I'm going to be here to support you, and it's totally you know, responsive. It's going to work on all these platforms. He's not afraid to say that I'm building something high quality. Less is more, which is tremendous. As developers and designers and entrepreneurs, we're like chasing, chasing shiny objects all the time. I can add this. We can do that. Um, focus on that, that one specific problem for the customer. Uh, and align your core beliefs uh, with, with WordPress and open source. Right. So he. Uh, recently wrote an article, if you just go to TomMcFarland.com, you probably see it, about uh, focusing on and staying uh, on track with WordPress, WordPress's beliefs uh, and your beliefs around open source and the code that you develop. Uh, it's very important uh, to do stuff like that because you're going to uh, get into that open source mentality. You're going to follow uh, what WordPress is doing. And if you want your products to align, it's great advice from Tom. Embrace the suck. Anybody ex-military service? Yes, yes. Um, so this is a, a phrase that uh, Nathan, co-founder of the Ignition Deck, uh, learned while he was uh, serving in the military. Right? It's something that uh, really resonates with me because being an entrepreneur and starting something is never easy. Right? So you just embrace it. Like You know it's going to suck. Show up. You know you're going to get beat up. Right? Uh, and you're hopefully working to that, that next level uh, with your team or with your product. Uh, he launched Ignition Deck, uh, I forget, a few years ago, uh, and that's a uh, crowdfunding plugin for WordPress. So if you're familiar with like a Kickstarter, you can get this plugin and do that on WordPress. Uh, so he had some tremendous competition, number one being Kickstarter, right? Why do it on your WordPress site when you can just do it on Kickstarter? Well, of course, there's uh, benefits and features to that in his plugin, uh, but that was the type of competition that, that he was up against when he launched. Uh, WordPress community is even tougher. So one of the things that he doesn't really or didn't get into early on uh, was following sort of the WordPress way of doing things, selling products, and sort of being involved with our community. And he learned some strong lessons along the way. Um, and don't be afraid to take on the big boys, in his case, uh, Kickstarter, um, and facing that, that challenge because now is, he's going into maybe his third or fourth year. Um, he's acquired another theme company and he's really extending the product. 
Very important to systemize, create systems, to-do lists, all that fun stuff that we hate, but we love it. We hate it, but we love it. Uh, Ryan Castle, founder of uh, Restaurant Engine, which is a uh, WordPress hosted, hosted WordPress uh, service for restaurants. Uh, so you can create uh, WordPress site, uh, restaurant WordPress sites for like 50 bucks a month. Created a vertical for hosted WordPress sites in the restaurant industry. Um, and he started this probably along the same time as Happy Tables, I believe, started. That's a very big competitor in the space. Um, he has his features and his benefits to why uh, folks should choose Restaurant Engine, and he's you know going up against them sort of probably day to day. Um, but his number one thing is build systems to help organize and delegate tasks within your business. Uh, I've met with him before, I'm good friends with him, and he shows me his spreadsheets of uh, tasks that he delegates uh, to his virtual team uh, of customer support, sales outreach, uh, and analytics reporting. He has a good white paper that you can get from his site, which is cashjam.com, about how he goes in every week to review his Google Analytics. I could never do it. Way too much for me. Um, but it's, it's, it's just one of the uh, building blocks of what he does every day uh, in getting into a system. Uh, and it's very important that a lot of us do that. Does anybody else struggle with systems and to-do lists? Is this anything like Groupon? Um, no. So this would be a site uh, where you could go if you were a restaurant. I need a website as a restaurant. You can sign up, um, and it just has pre-made themes with like a menu system. Thomas Griffin, fine-tune your funnel. Um, again, if you are somebody who's putting out a product and you're really into the analytics uh, and fine-tuning your product, uh, Thomas Griffin's a great guy. Follow, he created uh, Soliloquy Slider and Enviro Gallery. Anybody familiar with those two? Nice. Is that a, is that a good guess? Yeah. All right, good. <laughs> uh, both, uh, I believe you can get one for free in the .org and then he has the premium. Uh, focus on conversions and A-B testing. So he did a uh, podcast uh, on my show talking about automated marketing. Uh, and then he, he increased his monthly recurring revenue by 3,800 uh, using a platform called Customer.io, right? And he has tons of these types of lessons, right? So if you're into that sort of tweaking and A-B testing and heat maps and what can I do to improve my funnel, um, he's not a pure SEO kind of guy. He's just taking the lessons he's learned from trying this out on his own and putting it out there. Uh, but Customer.io sort of just captures different data from different fields and is basically just sending an email to somebody who didn't finish the purchase on the website, right? Cart abandonment. We email them and say, "Hey, notice you were halfway through. Save ten bucks if you sign up right now." You know, and he created this sort of automated marketing campaign uh, with that platform, and he saw his sales uh, grow by thirty-eight hundred a month. Modern tribe, right? Being an unwa being unwavering and fun all at the same time, right? So Shane Perlman, founder, uh, co-founder of Modern Tribe, great for somebody who's in product development. If you're a surfer, follow him. He loves to do that. Uh, if you're a freelancer, follow him because he puts out some great resources for that. Uh, he's really the perfect blend of being resolute and enjoying what you do, right? I mean, he uh, Modern Tribe is sort of the, the unicorn hybrid, at least in my opinion, of a company that runs product and does high-end client services. So they have event. Events Calendar Pro. Anybody familiar with that one? Fairly popular calendar plugin. Uh, they sell that. And they sell some other plugins. Uh, but they do some other high end client work as well. Uh, and he does all this uh, by setting expectations for your team, for your product, and your customer. So, although he's a surfer and it's sort of a lifestyle business, he's also very to the point of as a team, here's what we're going to accomplish. Here's how we're going to get there. Um, and here's the results that we expect. You can have fun while doing it. But this is what we need to achieve as a team to keep to, to have a sustainable WordPress business. <coughs> Speaking of sustainable WordPress businesses, anybody think that themes are too inexpensive or too expensive? Raise your hand if you think they're too cheap. Raise your hand if you think they're too expensive. Okay. Well, we can talk about that stuff later. Anybody familiar familiar with this guy? Jake Goldman, good friend of mine. Uh, know him from down at the uh, Providence WordPress, or yeah, down at the WordPress Providence meetup. Uh, he's a visionary, uh, and he's an annual blogger, so he blogs once a year. If we could get him to do that a little bit more often, that'd be great. <laughs> um, 
So I, I, I really uh, admire Jake and, and what he's done over the course of uh, probably the last four to five years, roughly. Uh, don't be afraid to dream big, right? That's the biggest takeaway that I get from Jake. Um, started as a solopreneur, uh, and now he's one of the largest WordPress-focused uh, agencies uh, in our market space. So, uh, you know, not being a, not being afraid to take on sort of the big boys or just to start and get going uh, was the number one lesson that I learned from Jake. And what's interesting is whenever we he and I talk <clears throat> on the podcast or other panels, all this stuff about WordPress and all the uh, sort of things he does in the WordPress community and all that his team does in the WordPress community, when it gets down to the client, he's not talking specifically about WordPress, right? He's talking about how uh, the agency solves this particular problem, problem for this client, how they're bringing other technologies into it, and oh, by the way, we use WordPress. We're probably the number one WordPress team that you can hire on the planet. Um, so he doesn't get bogged down in, WordPress is awesome, WordPress is great. It does these fun things and it has plugins and widgets. Um, it's more about focusing on uh, the solution for the customer. Raise your prices. I mean, the number one thing that we should probably take away from this. Anybody familiar with Chris Lemma? ChrisLemma.com. Chris is a good friend of mine. If you don't know who he is, you can find him at ChrisLemma.com. He's a blogger <coughs> coach, uh, and he comes from the VC space, so he has a lot of knowledge and experience in product development. Um, we're not charging enough. Uh, to sustain businesses. Right now, he's sort of in the mix of a good probably five or six part blog, uh, blog series that he has going on about raising prices of themes, right? Um, you know, he's looking at themes should be 300, 500, 1,000, right? Um, my company sells themes and he looks at me every day and he'll, send, he'll say, are you charging 1,000 bucks yet? It's like, no, I'm not. It's so hard to make that leap. It's so hard to justify it. It's so hard to document it so that I can say that <laughs> it's worth $1,000. But what he's doing is, is he wants us to raise our prices so that we can sustain these businesses. A lot of us jumping into the theme space maybe five years ago it was great because everybody was buying themes, but now we're just seeing sort of the bottom end falling out because it is not sustainable when we're selling it for like 30 bucks and we're supporting customers for five years. Um, so his biggest lesson is to raise your prices. He also wants us to tell better stories. It's something that we all have to get better at when we're doing our marketing telling the story of why people should do business with us and why people should use our products. Um, he's very much leading about, with example of his own site, telling their stories like he does um, and enforcing that we do the same. Become great at something and solve that problem better than anyone. I was talking to him the other day and he was like, man, I just referred a local uh, tourist company to a, a local WordPress developer. They charged him $5,000 to build a site that showcased his uh, or their tour packages for Southern California. He's like, they charged him 5,000 bucks. He goes, you could have made a theme for 1,000 and then sold it for, at, to tour, tourism directors and other tourism shops uh, for the same solution that they put together. Uh, he wants us to find these, these little niches, find them, and then throw those verticals. Uh, so he's very much uh, into sort of finding that. Number, the advice that I have pretty much for myself that I've learned throughout the years of uh, doing this and talking to other folks is we have to understand ourselves uh, and our own capabilities first, right? A lot of us sort of jump in there and we're like, I want to do what Copywogger does. I want to do what this guy or gal who's making a, you know, a mil million dollars a year selling themes on ThemeForce because it has been done, right? Maybe not a year, but uh, seven figure um, in revenue total for selling themes. And we sort of start looking at them and copying them and saying, how can I do the same thing? I did the same thing with Jake, right? I have six people, Jake has 60 people. <laughs> uh, so there's a big difference. Uh, we all can't be um, the competition, we all can't just replicate. So it's important that we understand what we're doing really good uh, and using that as our leverage, right? If we're not a designer and we're out there developing sites and we're scratching our heads and we're getting clients angry at us, we just have to find a developer to partner with. There's enough ways, enough margin uh, to work in these projects where you should just <coughs> find someone else to do it. Find the things that, that you can delegate. So thank you. Uh, and you can find me on iTunes and any questions. No questions. Yes, sir. Do you have like, any tips 
uh, for how to, de- like, I guess I should ask, how did you develop all of your relationships with these people? Like, when you started in the WordPress community to now knowing yeah. 12 of, like, that's the heavy hitters? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. So, uh, probably about two years ago, I know Jesse Friedman from Providence, one of the organizers up here. So he was my first one, right? And it all sort of started when I went to WordCamp New York probably three or four years ago. And there were too many people in the room that were afraid to talk to sort of these other figureheads in WordPress. So I was like, well, I'm not a developer, I'm not a designer, so what can I do for WordPress? And this was it, so I started. I just said, hey Jesse, I'm gonna turn the camera on, we're gonna record something. And then he did it with me, and then I just found people that I followed on, on Twitter, and I just reached out to them. And then one by one, sort of just built it up over time. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Any other questions about WordPress businesses, stuff that's troubling you with clients, launching a product? No? Mm-hmm. How much time I have left? Yes, sir. I had a question on promoting. Yep. So we just put out, I'm, I'm really new to WordPress. Um, so we just put out a WordPress plugin, and like, how do you, like, what's a good way to promote it? I mean, a lot of the examples you mentioned were kind of, seems like almost like organic, like people yep. start doing it, and then business grows, and are like kind of agency. Mm-hmm. But what about, you know, like driving traffic to your plugin? I mean, some of it happens through the app directory, but is it just standard kind of web marketing, like get people in? Or yeah, there's a, there's a lot of that involved. Um, you know, this typical SEO route and the typical paid traffic and organic traffic, stuff like that. Uh, if you're looking to do the WordPress specific way, mm-hmm. it's a lot of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a lot of going to WordCamps. Um, you know, the WordPress podcasting scene is super hot right now. Um, not to get more people uh, taking away my listeners, but uh, that's also a very, uh, very useful tool right now. You know, one of the things that you could, I don't know what, what the plugin does, but you could be documenting like the development of it, the behind the scenes sort of thing, and start growing an, an, an audience now so that when you launch, you have somebody to at least talk to and get some feedback. Mm-hmm. There's a long road ahead. I mean, as you probably already know, it's, Will it work on this environment? Will it work on this person's WordPress install? There's all that stuff that you have to tend, that you have to deal with. Does that answer your question? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anything else? Yes. Um, tracking word, I think, is a good thing, but perhaps it's easier said, said than, than done. done. Yeah. Um, so you're absolutely right. It's one of those chicken or the egg kind of things where you have to uh, really build that portfolio or at least build some use cases so that you can sort of slowly raise the price, right? So my story is my family owned uh, car dealerships for 40 years. Um, so I ran the dealership with my father. Uh, but I went to school for tech when I worked at an ISP for like seven years. So one of the things that we started very early on was taking a step back as the freelancer and saying, what are all the things that I do, right? So sure, there's designing the site, there's developing the site, and there's launching the site, right? We all know that. But then there's the project management side, there's the support side, there's the education side, there's the wireframing, there's a competitive discovery. There's all of these other things that you might, and you might have other stuff. You might do photography with that. Listing out all the stuff that you do and getting a good visual of that for yourself and saying, oh my God, I do all of this. Right? And you look at your clients and you're like, wow, I'm supporting them for like 90 days after the, se- the sale. I should really work in a support package or something like that. Um, start with a high end, right? So I don't know what you charge now, but let's say it's 1,500 bucks to do a site. Start with 5,000. And then when you negotiate with the client, say, look, I'm gonna give you a friends and family discount. Right? We're gonna knock it down 40% if you say yes, because I'm working this new process. I've hired some other team. Uh, I had hired some other you know, members to a team or something like that and see if they say yes, right? Uh, anybody familiar with Gary Vaynerchuk? Gary B? So he said, uh, when he started his agency, he said, I went out and I charged 10,000, they said yes. I went out and I charged 25,000, they said yes. I went out and charged 35,000, they said yes. I went out and charged 55,000, they said to go jump off a bridge. And he said, okay, uh, 35,000, like we'll go back down to that. Right, so there's nothing wrong with that, right? First of all, we'll talk about selling on value. Like what kind of value are you bringing to the table? Right, if you're just launching somebody online and they're selling something online, are they gonna make $10,000 of that for every year? Is it worth it for them to invest the 10,000 now with you so that they can make X amount over the course? <clears throat> Some clients aren't the right fit. It's also a super important lesson. You know, you can say no a lot and then when you find the one that says yes to 10,000, 
you're good for X amount of days, you know? And then you, don't have, and then you have more time to pay attention to them instead of trying to gather up five clients at 2,000 that are all pulling at your attention span, you know? Um, but I would just visually look at your process and look at all the stuff you already provide. Say, what, my, what is my time worth? Start at the high end and then give them, you know, I hate to discount things, but it's a great way to get started. You build that portfolio. And then when you go to negotiate with somebody else, you can say, look what I did for $10,000. Hey, Matt? Yes, sir. I heard the gentleman speak, Blair Enns, E-N-N-S. Mm -hmm. He came up with a 12-step manifesto for price and value. Yep. He said that the shocker for him was, while he was traveling, he went into a Prada store mm -hmm. to get a nice T-shirt for his wife. Yep. And it was 500 bucks. And he wants to leave, and he said, well, they must have other stuff. And he asked them, and they said, oh, we've got some stuff back there, sure, similar to that, for 250 Yeah. And he said, I'll take it. Yeah. So he said, it's very important to have a, a very high, complete package yep. up front. Yep. And then, by the way, get other things. Yeah, price anchoring is great. Um, I'm not a fan, I used to do, I, we used to have our pricing on our agency site, and, uh, and then that was just a scary thing. <laughs> uh, not to say it doesn't work. Uh, it definitely works with product and things like that. And we do that with our plugins and themes and things like that. But I, I think that depends on what space you want to be in. Um, you can certainly compare it. Like I said, you can come in and say, this is 5000 but we can do half of this for 2500 and maybe that's acceptable. Um, but what you'll find as consultants that you're much more focused on, at least I, in, from my experience, that you're focused on building a business for them sort of online or taking all the components of their business and putting it online for them. Um, we focus on uh, awareness, uh, efficiency, and revenue, right? So when a customer comes to us, it's about awareness first, online, of course, and how do we tie in all your traditional stuff, like advertising, uh, radio, television, whatever that might be, uh, and the whole round of it is about awareness. We're going to launch a new site, it's going to be well designed, it's going to be on mobile, people will find you here, here, and here. Uh, efficiency, you know basic stuff, contact form, right? We all know about contact forms, but what about order forms? Forms that go to sales reps, forms that go to administrative stuff, right, staff. So we're making insight not only for people to find you, but to make your business more efficient, right? And then we focus on the revenue. So not only does awareness help people find you and make more money, uh, efficiency also helps you make more money. So that's one part of our revenue vertical. And then how do we make money with e-commerce or digital products or like that? So. That's how we sort of stack that together. Yes. You said, I think I was intrigued by you saying you kind of scary when you were you were talking about putting pricing for projects. Yeah. Has an agency on your site? Yeah. And what, what did you find happened? Perfect example would be a uh, client looking for WordPress services and talking to a larger WordPress agency, or larger agency, doesn't necessarily always have to be WordPress getting a quote from them for $40,000, then seeing our pricing page with a high-end package at $5,000. So then the questions are, can you guys really do this? Like, can you do what we want you to do? $5,000, $40,000, $40, I want the product t-shirt at $500. Like, I don't want the Gap t-shirt at $5 for $7.99. Um, so we ran into that a lot. As we started getting uh, more uh, found in the WordPress community, that's what we started running into. They were looking at us saying, can you really do this? Because forty thousand. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, because because I, it's, it's, it is one of those things where now we're more focused on. Uh, over time, you start to get the referrals for more stuff, right? Like we we want you to build the site, and oh by the way, it needs to integrate with our custom CRM and our warehouse with inventory, right? So then there's it's very difficult for us to say, you know, well it's forty thousand, but it might be eighty thousand. Um, so we've just taken prices down altogether. Um, yeah. It totally depends, right? So uh, I'm going to be starting another podcast soon with this other guy. I don't know how much time I have. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's 7.37. Okay. When do you guys have to go up? I think 7.37. Okay. Uh, so I'm starting, another, I'm starting another podcast with this other guy, Adam Clark, and he's doing a WordPress site in a day. 
right? So his thing is, it's a thousand bucks to get your site up and running. Now we all probably know that realistically we can put up a site in a day for somebody as long as all the stars align. And he's charging a thousand bucks, and it's very rigid sort of. We yeah, need this, I need that. We get started on July and whatever, and for this day, it's a thousand bucks. I'll get the site. You give me the content. We pick the theme. It's done, right? So a lot of people are like, oh my God, this is not going to work. Right. The client inevitably fails, and then it costs more, and then it's disappointment. <laughs> Bingo. Bingo. So he doesn't know. It's called WP Theory, and it's a theory right now. Um, and he's hoping that it's going to work. But uh, with all the stars aligning and the right clients, I mean, with some proper marketing and with some good referrals, certainly. Right? So this is one of the things where if you can find a developer or a designer to refer this perfect client to you, that's great. It's going to work. Right? If you get the person who's just searching for you, I was like, oh yeah, a thousand bucks. This is awesome. Okay, now I've got 800 pages to move over. You know, and you got what you. I don't. I have to do the content. I thought it was you. Um, so there's these, you know, different ways to go about it. Right? It's like a thousand dollar fee. Yes, ma'am. Marketing. How do we get our clients? Um, so we get our clients. Forty thousand dollars. The forty thousand dollar ones. The forty thousand dollar ones. I'll have to charge you to tell you. No. Um, <laughs> Uh, the larger clients, it comes a lot just from referral, right? Um, it's the same thing, chicken or the egg, moving from client to client. We've been doing this now for six years. Um, but we get a lot of referrals and a lot of uh, leads from the podcast and the media that we do. So I do my podcast, but I really don't filter it to, the, <coughs> to our agency. Uh, but we have a YouTube channel where we do theme reviews, plugin reviews, WordPress information. Um, you know, we have... 4,000 subscribers, which is awesome for WordPress. <laughs> uh, and we get a lot of people reaching out to us saying, hey, you know, I'm a director of a nonprofit, and we, I've been trying to get this Gravity Forms thing to work. What's the best route, right? So we'll do a lot of consulting and strategy for that. Um, and then other marketing is, uh, we actually have a, our best content marketing is actually a traditional um, printed piece. Uh, down on the South Coast, uh, we're, Dar we're from Dartmouth, so New Bedford was once the whaling capital of the world. Matter of fact, uh, the Morgan is there now, which is the last remaining whaling ship. So we do, or one of, uh, we do a printed tourism guide for the South Coast. It's certainly not as grand as, as up here, but that gets us in the door to the local businesses, right? So it's a small revenue stream, but it also gets us known in the community, uh, and for the and for the small businesses down there, we can put something together for the web for them, right? Um, so that's content marketing the traditional way. Anything else? How do you handle support from online on Yep. Everything from just getting up pages to yep. describing what issue we need to do this the same way I've done before and yep. any help. Yep. So the best thing is that you could probably do uh, is, is, especially if you're just starting out as freelancers or even a couple years running, is start signing support contracts ASAP, as long as you know that you want to do it. Um, and that's another thing we don't put a price tag on. We just negotiate the monthly based on uh, a retainer. Whatever the project is, if we know that they're going to need help with sort of digging into their analytics or what is blogging, am I doing this right, those types of questions, um, we will come up with a number based on whatever it is that, that their needs are. Right? So our typical minimum uh, retainer is 90 days, 1500 a month. And that's going to support them at a variety of levels. depends on what it is that they need. Um, a lot of folks don't want to manage that because a lot of folks want to just be efficient at launching a business online and moving to the next customer. There are plenty of other support agencies that are out there that will just sort of white label your support, take it over, you can build them, build the client, and then have them do the work, and you just pay the invoice at the end. Um, but that was the number one thing. I mean, coming from the sales background, the car sales background, it was a GM, it was a GM sales, uh, a GM dealership, so government. we got out at the right time, but we saw the painting on the wall. Uh, but the support and the service contracts were the only thing that really made us money at that point, late 2000s. So we already knew going into it, there was no real margin when we started on the web, so we just knew that we'd have to go into it selling support contracts or marketing contracts, um, and that's what we did. Does that make up a significant portion of your revenue? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ongoing support stuff, um, and that's how we found. You know, that's really how we get into the bigger, bigger clients, universities, um, 
we have a handful of, of smaller colleges that we consult with um, because they don't have the staff uh, to do it. They don't have the staff enough, enough to hire somebody, but they have enough that you know they can pay somebody on a consulting basis or retainers in that case. Can you talk more about retainers? More about retainers. Hmm. <laughs> um, everything that we do is we so we will. Just trying to the best way to put it. So now we're not doing anything uh, with businesses that aren't doing a million dollars in revenue a year, right? So, and that's something that we probably started a year ago, uh, saying that if you're a, if you're a small business and you're like a pizza joint, I can refer you to places that can get you up and running. Um, so we're we're now just focused on the million dollars of revenue a year, uh, and then negotiating from that. What is your ad budget? What do you have set aside? Do you have a contact? Uh, very much a interview for the client for us to work with them, right? Because if it's just a million dollar business and it's the CEO that's running everything and, every, and there's nobody that we can work with on the marketing or IP level, we're not gonna, we're, we're, our price will be five times, right? Fingers crossed, maybe we get it, but they'll probably say no. Because we need to, or we work most efficiently with other teams that are gonna handle this stuff. Um, so that's our first. That's the first thing that we do. We get the interview out of the way, and we understand. And we make them understand that we're not here to just launch a site, but we're here for a long-term commitment. I mean, we want at least something for 90 days. Most of the people are for a year, and then re-up those contracts. So if they're not already, if they're not even interested in it, like oh, we don't need. We just need this. We just need to get this done yesterday. <laughs> then we're, we're probably not the best fit. Even if they have the budget. Probably not the best fit. We can refer you to somebody else. Best thing that we've done, or one of the funny things is, is folks come to you and they say, oh my god, you want to charge $5,000 for a website? No way. I'm going to find it on Odesk for like $9.97 an hour. And I'm not even going to give them a good feedback. Uh, you, can, you can say, hey, no problem. I can refer you to people to go and do it. But our process is, and this is back to your point of how to charge more, our process is this, or my process is this. I'm focused on your business. I'm focused on being in a relationship you know, with you for at least 90 days to get you up and running. This, this, and this, I can't afford you, no way. And you refer them to somebody else. You then falls flat on their face, right? And then the customers, and the customers, you know, they don't get their site launched <coughs> in 30 days like they wanted. They didn't get the content up that they wanted. Then they come back to you and say, oh my God, I should have paid you 5,000. You say, well, I'm kind of booked, but you can get you in uh, for, you know, X amount of dollars. Uh, so, you know, that there's great, there's a great, uh, I don't want to say benefit, but there's a great way to uh, slowly refer people out for them to learn the lesson. You knew that referral was going to drop the ball. Uh, so what I, I mean, <clears throat> I know when, I know when, not when the referral's going to, uh, it's not like I'm sending them to a referral that's going to drop the ball. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that how that came out? <laughs> John, John, you got to leave the room. I don't want you spreading this kind of, uh, no, that's not how I meant it. What I meant was, if you go and find some, somebody else to do this and they're not following this process, um, you know, this is the reason why we charge this much, this is, the, this is the reason why you have to pay for discovery first, this is the reason why you have to fit this bill, is because this is the way we work. It's not how we, we're the most efficient this way. All right, what's the, what's, what's, what are you trying to achieve with this project and how are we gonna get there, right? And this is how we do it. Um, you know, and then you'll get those, it's not all the time, but they'll come back and they say, you know what, they never launched the site. And I see it happen all the time. And I'm not saying these people come back to me, but I'll hit refresh on their page like 30 days after, 40 days after, and they still don't have a new site. What happened to you needing it in 30 days? You know, what happened to this great mobile site that you wanted? It's not working, it's not there. You know, then you send them a follow-up email. Hey, you need anything? <laughs> and then they don't respond because they're too afraid. <laughs> but that does happen. Anything else? I have two and a half minutes left. What are your, yes, sir. What are your blogs about? So, why do they give you a blog? The Matterport helps me connect with other WordPress entrepreneurs, other people in the WordPress space, right? I mean, you're, you're, you're uh, YouTube. Yep, so the YouTube one, uh, specifically for the studio site, uh, is all about WordPress. Reviews, news, uh, plug-in information. What's the best? 
What's the best membership plugin? What's the best e-commerce plugin? What that allows us to do, uh, these types of, um, these audience viewers uh, focus in on, you know, how do I set up a membership site? And then, oh, by the way, this is brought to you by the themes that we develop. So you get this great piece of information from us, and then you say, hey, your theme's not that bad. You're getting some good information, maybe I'll spend the 50 bucks and buy your theme. Helps us out. We get a customer. That kind of thing. Um, and then we focus a lot on uh, web marketing with a, a program that we call SEO Lunch, which is great for our clients. It's just quick 10, 15 minute videos about some web marketing trend or strategy. Um, and then when clients say, hey, can I spend an hour on the phone with you about this Facebook thing or this content marketing thing, they say, hey, look, there's 200 videos about this stuff. Go check it out. It's free. You know, they say that, that's pretty pretty good. So that's what, this, that's what this YouTube channel does for the business side of things, for the agency side of things, and the theme side of things. And then my podcast is more about connecting to the WordPress community, um, finding other WordPress agencies, that kind of thing. Twitter's big. Anybody uh, finding business through Twitter? At least for me. Nobody? Big opportunity. What about LinkedIn? Not for me. Not for me. Unfortunately. I spend a lot of time just on Twitter because I'm doing a lot of, uh, it's just quick communications with other WordPress people and other businesses, so I find that to be the most efficient for me. Um, but I have found a lot of business through, through Twitter. Facebook? Um, not on Facebook. Facebook's great, great for some of the group stuff, um, like finding other WordPress groups or business groups. Um, Google Plus, I, I run an entre a WordPress entrepreneur Google Plus group on Google Plus. So for those of you that like to join, there's about 800 folks there. Um, I'll buy Google Plus and just search for WordPress entrepreneurs. You can join that, and there's always people sharing business tips for WordPress. I'm done. I'm getting the signal that I'm done. <laughs> <laughs>